So as you all know, Justice Anthony Kennedy is set to retire from the Supreme Court at the end of summer, and President Donald Trump has wasted absolutely no time uh, going through replacements thus far, going through his short list, and he is set to announce Anthony Kennedy's replacement on July 9th, which is this upcoming Monday. Now, he has interviewed some individuals, and thus far, he does seem excited about them, saying, quote, they are outstanding people, they are really incredible people in so many different ways. Now, obviously, that's an empty statement that means absolutely nothing. It tells us nothing about their interpretation of the Constitution or how they plan to interpret the Constitution with regard to Roe v. Wade. And really, at this point, I could go through the short list of people for you that he's considering. I mean, that includes Charles Candy of Georgia's Court of Appeals or Allison Ide of the U.S. 10th Circuit Court of Appeals or Joan Larson and Mike Lee. And at this point, I, I really don't think that that matters because no matter who he chooses, you can almost guarantee that he or she will be a hardline conservative who will undoubtedly vote to overturn Roe v. Wade or Obergefell v. Hodges. Now, if I'm Chuck Schumer right now, I'm gearing up for the fight of my life because I'm less concerned currently as a progressive with who Donald Trump is going to pick because we're going to have to fight that individual no matter what. And I'm more concerned with what Chuck Schumer is doing and what Senate Democrats are doing. Chuck Schumer right now should be cracking skulls. He should be making sure that individuals like Joe Manchin, Joe Donnelly, Heidi Heitkamp aren't going to go full MAGA and just straight up vote with Donald Trump here. He should be doing what he can as a leader using all the tools at his disposal. And I mean all the tools at his disposal. However, chances are they're going to roll over and die. We're already seeing signs that that will in fact be the case. Because as Alexander Bolton of The Hill reports, Senate Democratic leader Charles Schumer is under pressure from the left to whip Democrats hard to oppose any Supreme Court nominee who might vote to overturn Roe v. Wade, the landmark decision that established a woman's right to an abortion. Liberal activist groups are urging their supporters to attend a town hall meeting with Schumer in Brooklyn on Monday night and press him to commit to squeeze red state Democrats who might feel pressure to back Trump's pick. We expect his constituents to be asking him really directly if he is going to commit to whipping the caucus and keeping Democratic voters together and in line in opposing Trump's extreme Supreme Court nominee, said Elizabeth Beavers, Associate Policy Director at Indivisible Project, a liberal advocacy group dedicated to defeating the Trump agenda and electing progressive leaders. Now again, if you're Chuck Schumer, you force... Democrats like Joe Manchin into submission because right now these red state Democrats think that if they go full MAGA that that will improve their electoral chances but what Chuck Schumer should be doing is saying look if you vote for this nominee you better hope to God that you don't get reelected because I'm gonna make your life hell you get no committee appointments, you get no fundraising, you're cut off from the fucking party if you go along with this. Because can you imagine what would happen if they actually voted to overturn Roe v. Wade? Well, you'd probably see at least a dozen states within months enact bans on abortion. It'd be absolutely devastating to women's rights in this country. So if you truly are going to claim that the Democratic Party has the moral high ground. You've got to fight, and that means you've got to beat members of your own caucus into submission. Unfortunately, though, it seems like Democrats, they're, ju they're just not willing to put up a fight. Kamala Harris pledged to fight, of course, and I believe that she will put up at least, you know, a little bit of fight, but she didn't commit to going as far as to boycott confirmation hearings, which I think could be really powerful. Joe Manchin, Heidi Heitkamp, and Joe Donnelly well, they're not likely to put up a fight at all. In fact, I think we would be better off fighting them to not go along with Donald Trump's pick. Doug Jones of Alabama won't say whether or not he'll resist Donald Trump's nominee at all. He probably won't. And Dianne Feinstein told people to be cautious when it comes to fighting or even delaying the vote because, you know, you, you got to make sure that you roll over and die any time Republicans exert even just a minimal amount of pressure on you because that's what Democrats do. They fold like a deck of cards any time they face even a little bit of resistance from Republicans. So they're not just going to willingly fight this. Chuck Schumer's gonna have to crack some skulls. Be a fucking leader. Prove once and for all that you deserve that position. I mean, any time he's had the chance, he's folded. Make this 
a lasting part of your legacy and fight Donald Trump tooth and nail. Look, you might not be able to, to stop it. You might not. But if you at least put up a fight, more so than the fight you put up for, what, a day and a half, two days during the government shutdown when you completely abandoned Dreamers, I mean, you've got to fight. That's basically... <laughs> That's the takeaway. But we can kind of get some insight into the thinking of some members of the Democrats when we look at this clip from Tammy Duckworth and her view on this issue because, you know, it really gives you some insight into just how weak and feckless this party really is. Listen to what she has to say about Joe Manchin potentially voting for Donald Trump's nominee. There are obviously a lot of Democrats uh, from red states, states that Trump won, who are up for re-election uh, this year. Uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure on them. Uh, Heidkamp from North Dakota, uh, Donnelly from Indiana, Manchin from West Virginia. Uh, some of them are even uh, op op uh, opponents of abortion rights. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think? Is sh should they vote the way that they need to vote to win re-election if it comes down to that? Or do you think they should vote the way that their party wants them to vote? I will tell you what I've learned in my short time here in the Senate, that those all three of them vote in whatever they need to do to take care of the people of their state. They put their constituents first. And uh, I've seen some real bravery from the three of them as well. Uh, Manchin, for example, uh, has said time and again that he will protect health care for the people of West Virginia. Um, same with Heidi Heitkamp. They, who they put first is not themselves, is not the party. They put their own states and the people, their constituents first. And I just ask them to vote for their constituents. And they will know um, which way to vote then. Understand what she's saying. It has to be the most ridiculous thing ever. She is suggesting that it might be in the best interest of Joe Manchin's constituents to vote for Trump's inevitably right-wing extremist Supreme Court nominee. In other words, what she's really saying here is, you know, maybe we don't have the solutions that will help out all Americans. Maybe, you know, Republicans are just doing a better job at looking out for some of the people in this country, and we only can cater to a few, you know, um, areas of, of the country. And to add another layer to this insanity of what she was talking about, she actually called Joe Manchin brave. I've seen some real bravery from the three of them as well. Uh, Manchin, for example. That tells you everything you need to know about this good-for-nothing, spineless, feckless, weak joke of a party. when they should all be dogpiling on Joe Manchin. This former progressive, this so-called Democrat, decides to commend Joe Manchin for being brave. He's going to do what's best for people, you know, in, in West Virginia. Even if that includes voting for a right-winger on the Supreme Court. You know, because, you know, Democrats, we don't, we don't have policies that help out all Americans. Republicans help out some Americans. We help out some Americans. That's their argument. I mean, it's mind-boggling. I don't know what to say about this. That's how stupid, how strategically inept members of the Democratic Party are. Again, I don't even know if they're able to defeat Donald Trump, even if 100% of Democrats got on board. And everyone here is, um, you know, if, if you listen to cable news shows, they're talking about how we can get Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski to flip, and that's possible. But what you really got to focus on is getting Democrats to just stay united on this one fucking issue. That's super important. But there's already a ton of glaring signs, huge red flags that indicate that they're going to fold. Mark my words, Donald Trump's going to put up someone and uh, they're going to pass through with flying colors. I would love to be wrong here. I hope I'm wrong here. But Democrats have never proven me wrong. Never. I would love to be proven wrong by Democrats just once. Prove me wrong on this, Democrats. Show me you have a spine. Show me, Chuck Schumer, that you have a spine. But we all know how this is going to go. The same way it's gone before. If they do put up a fight at all, they'll cave in days after Republicans criticize them and Donald Trump criticizes them on Twitter, and he'll get what he wants. They're not the resistance, they're the assistance. That's how they've been behaving since Trump has become president, and I don't expect that to change anytime soon. Support this podcast by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash humanist report.